Welcome to the Crash and Rebuild channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing a capacitor on my 4-in-1 ESC. Installing a capacitor can help clean up messy video and even extend the life of your speed controller. The size, voltage requirements, and even the brand of the capacitor are wildly debated online. Maybe we can do some testing of those claims in an upcoming video, but for today, we're going to be focusing on soldering and making sure that you've done it right. We'll be working with a 470 microfarad 35 volt electrolytic capacitor on this particular build. Also note that my stack layout is a bit unconventional, as is the aftermarket pot I'm using, so we'll be working around that as well. Let's get started. So to install these capacitors is pretty easy. If you take a look at the capacitor itself, there is one side that has a stripe, and if it's a brand new cap that doesn't have the legs chopped off, one of those legs is going to be shorter than the other. The shorter side and the side with the stripe here is your negative. The long side and the side with no stripe is your positive. So it's going to line up something kind of like that for us. Short side is our negative, our black, long side is our positive. Some newer speed controllers, some nicer speed controllers, actually have a little hole that you can shove these right down into and kind of bend forward. And This speed controller doesn't, so we're going to have to go ahead and trim the legs so that they fit right here on these pads and we'll solder them right in place for the pads. But first, I wanna go ahead and put the camera back on because I know it's pretty tight in this area and I don't wanna uh, squish this cap. There is not a ton of room to work in there. So we're gonna have to get kind of inventive, I think. And I may honestly just chop the bottom of this, uh, this pod out. It's not really doing me any good. And if I could just tuck the cap right in there, I think that'll do it. The other option would be a Waffles cap cap um, and to run it right on the XT60 side instead. But um, I think I'm just gonna poke a hole in the bottom of this. So I've got these little legs trimmed up here. I've got a little section chopped out of the bottom of my pod area. And I think what we're gonna do is just go ahead and solder those right on there. There's not too much extra lead here, such that it could get in the way. Remember that carbon fiber is conductive, so if I had left this nice and long like that, and these could come across and touch both of the edges of the carbon fiber, that could short your battery and capacitor right through the, uh, the carbon frame, which is not really what we're after. So I think something like that should really get the job done and we'll be all right. So through this section here, I have just a long-winded way of saying, do an actual good job of soldering. So this section is a little tricky just because there's so much thermal mass. You've got these big, long, large gauge wires and a big old chunk of copper uh, for the pads of the speed controller. And so it's going to take a bunch of heat and you got to make sure that your, your angles are all good and all that good stuff. So make sure that you do a good job there. Don't just blob a bunch of extra solder back onto the top. You want to make sure that you're actually heating that pad up well enough. And if you need to use a solder sucker and do it again because you accidentally bridge over the top there, do it. And uh, hopefully you get a nice looking solder joint at the end. And that feels much better. Hopefully that was a decent, uh, it, was a, it was a terrible example of how to solder because I did a, a poor job. Uh, but it was a good example of how... Uh, a good solder joint and a bad solder joint is going to look for this kind of an application. You really want it to be pulling in. You want the heat on both parts, both the pad and the actual lead of the capacitor itself. And I really only had the heat on the lead of the capacitor, which is why it blobbed the way that it did. So the other thing that we really want to check before we go and plug anything in, and this is where a smoke stopper or something comes in really handy, is that we have nothing in between here uh, bridging these two accidentally. Um, I'm going to do that with a multimeter and just check continuity on both sides here. Uh, if you don't happen to have a multimeter, one, buy one. It's essential for this hobby as far as I'm concerned. And two, uh, you can use a, a smoke stopper to plug your battery in and it will, it will trip definitely if that is shorted out. So if you just put your, your meter into continuity mode and mine, it happens to be this guy right here. So I bring it over to resistance and then poke the blue button. Now we're in continuity mode. You can tell by the little speaker icon over here. And if we just touch both leads together, you should be able to hear a beeping. So if we go ahead and just touch both of these, we get no beeping at all. If I were to put both of them on black, it does beep. If both of them are on red, it does beep. If they are separate, we're good. So what means 
or what that means is if I had accidentally bridged these two and they were touching together, if I were to touch both of these, my meter would beep and I would know that that was not okay. So that's one way that you can use a multimeter to make sure that you didn't mess up soldering. Hope that helps.